So yesterday, I told you I'd be bringing you the meat today. Well, turns out that the meal's a little bit bigger than I had anticipated. So, think of yesterday as the amuse-bouche, and today as the first course, the first proper course. I'm going to leave the music the same because we're still sort of in that uh, appetizer stage. We'll change it when we get to the entree. Enjoy. So the thing is, my son Gavin has never, I've never really explained to him what I do. He knows I work in Africa, but he doesn't know what the war's about or who Joseph Kony is. So I'm gonna explain it to him for the first time today. That's what we're doing. So Gav, are you ready? Yeah. I'm gonna ask you some questions okay. and you can just look at me and ask and answer the questions to me. I'm going to What do I do for a job? I will stop the bad guys from being me. You're wrong. Who are the bad guys? Um. Do you know where Star the, Wars people. Star Wars people? Yeah. Those are the bad guys? Yeah. Can I tell you the bad guy's name? Yeah. This is the, this is the guy, Joseph Coney. You're so wrong. He's the bad guy? Yeah. Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. I know. Cheap shot, right? Well, of course it's a cheap shot. But what does this asshole expect? If you were saying that Joseph Coney is a bad guy, he would be absolutely right, and I would have no qualm. To say that Coney is the bad guy, especially when addressing his own impressionable child, Mr. Russell is not telling the truth. The implication here is, of course, that we the viewers are as ignorant about this topic as is little Gavin. I feel sorry for Gavin, and I hope he calls his father out not only for exploiting him for a cheap, however cute gain, courtesy of this misleading film, but also for being a flat-out liar when he grows up. So if Coney is not THE bad guy, but he is A bad guy, who are the others? There are several governments affected by the LRA, but Mr. Russell is, at this point, speaking about Uganda. We'll get into how he's wrong, 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 wrong on that issue later. For now, we'll stick to Uganda. The Republic of Uganda is located in eastern Africa and is home to around 33 million people. While it is officially a republic, Uganda is actually more of a dictatorship. Its president slash dictator is a lovely fellow by the name of Yawari Museveni, and he has been in office since 1986. I bring him up now because the aim of the Kony 2012 movement is to provide assistance to the Ugandan government, enabling the country's military to arrest Kony. As Museveni is the man in charge, this means assisting him. He's the bad guy? Well, no, Gavin, Museveni is not the bad guy either, but he is another bad guy. I'll bet you want to know why, don't you? Depending on the source, one can obtain a range of different figures relating to the number of children's lives Kony has ruined. The highest figure I found, one much larger than that portrayed in Mr. Russell's little flick, is 104,000. Now, that's the number of children conscripted by the LRA, according to Jimmy Briggs in his 2005 book, Innocence Lost, when child soldiers go to war. Not the number of deaths, which is arguably much lower. Regardless of the possible inflation of that number, I'll set the baseline at 104,000 for Kony. So that goes some way in explaining why Kony is a bad guy, but where's the beef on Museveni? The thing is, as Mr. Russell would say, President Museveni has a wee little bit of blood on his hands, too. In the late 1990s, as part of the Second Congo War, Museveni had the Ugandan military invade the Democratic Republic of Congo, or DRC, and occupy its land. This alone has resulted in some five million-plus deaths, 
and is only one of the conflicts in which Museveni has been involved. Since taking office, he has also abolished term limits, and this has all taken place since he initially gained power by armed rebellion. Sorry to be presumptuous, but that fairly well stitches up the case that Museveni is a bad guy, as far as I'm concerned. Of course, there is one more thing. Remember this. For now, the most important thing to bear in mind about the pink swastika is that it is a revision of the Holocaust. Lively believes homosexuals and homosexuality were behind the Nazi party and that the Holocaust was itself an aspect of the, quote, gay agenda, end quote. The book's publication marks the point at which Uganda's anti-gay community first took notice of Lively, eventually leading to his speaking engagement at a conference there in 2009. That would be the conference largely credited with the formation of Uganda's current anti-gay movement and the tabling of the all-too-familiar anti-homosexual bill in Uganda's legislature. The gay movement is an evil institution. That's goal. The goal of the gay movement is to defeat the marriage-based society and replace it with a culture of sexual promiscuity in which there's no restrictions on sexual conduct except the principle of Mutual choice. I don't hate anybody. I don't want violence against them. That would be something that took place in Museveni's Uganda. More aptly stated, that is something that is taking place in Museveni's Uganda. Maybe you're thinking, yeah, but that was a bill in Parliament, not directly from the President. It's not fair to assume he supported it. Sadly, if that is your take, the only thing I can tell you is that you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. When the bill was introduced in all its glory, including that loving kindness inspired bit which would allow for the fucking death penalty to be employed against members of the LGBTQ community in Uganda, Museveni supported the bill quite openly. He eloquently expressed his approval with the following quote We used to say Mr. and Mrs., but now it is Mr. and Mr. What is that now? In fairness, after more than a year of intense international pressure, Museveni implied he thought the death penalty provision was a little harsh, telling the international press that extreme caution was warranted where vetting the bill is concerned. Just in case you're thinking that all took place quite a while ago, it is my extreme displeasure to inform you that the bill went back up for consideration in Uganda's parliament just last month in February of 2012. Funny how the timing of this obviously non-propaganda film from Mr. Russell about the plight of people in Uganda discussing a man, Kony, who is not even in Uganda anymore worked out, isn't it? Surely it wasn't released when it was to wag the dog and avoid international controversy over the reintroduction of that fucking bill, right? Nah. <laughs>